Welcome to another episode of FishingLocalWaters.com. We were planning an episode named Below the Falmouth Spillway. We had already fished the site and returned to collect data for the storyboard, the video angles, and the narrative. You know, part of the research was to determine why the dam was there and uh, what the uh, local residents called the dam. And uh, in the future, we will finish this episode. However, the research took us in an entirely different direction, and we'll talk about that research when we return. Welcome to another episode of FishingLocalWaters.com. Remember, if you're fishing, you're almost always fishing in someone's local waters. So when on private land, talk to the owners and ask permission, and always be courteous and good stewards whenever you're on private or public properties. We hope you enjoyed this segment of FishingLocalWaters.com. Welcome back to today's episode of FishingLocalWaters.com. Before I share the next video, please allow this old man a moment to look back. I've been involved in the industry and the outdoor industry for years. I've been on some of the world's highest mountains, whitewater class four and five rapids, <laughs> sometimes upside down. <laughs> I was a very early member of the rock climbing community, long before sports climbing existed, and I have logged thousands of hours guiding kids and adults on adventure outings. I've sat on summits with climbing partners, looking at photos of our kids in tears and wondering if what we did was fair to them. Was it fair to our parents? Was it fair to our spouses? Over time, every individual who participates in adventure-based outdoor activities will have to answer the question is why? Why take the risk? I have found that the answer is different for everyone. For me, it was the fellowship of the rope. It was the people, the relationships. For others, it's a sense of accomplishment. Some, it's an adrenaline rush. For one of my climbing partners, John Hay, who is shown in blue next to me in this photo, uh, it was a way for him to settle and focus in his mind. It actually brought peace to him. For Stephanie Ross, also shown, she loved the physical aspect. For Josh Rowe, who's on the far left, well, Josh was just born with a wandering soul. For Jim Wilson, another climbing partner who's not shown, he loved the, understanding the technical aspect of every sport he ever participated in, and he loved the physical challenge. And for my wife, it's an element of solitude. Regardless of the reason of why, I'm an advocate for outdoor adventure, particularly for children. So before I show this video, I want you to promise me that there will be no comments and or actions of any kind that will discourage individuals from participating in outdoor adventures. However, let us do so in an educated and informed manner, and that is the purpose of this episode. Breaking news update to a story we've been tracking since the weekend. A 14-year-old girl who fell into the Licking River has died. The girl fell into the river at Robinson Dam Sunday. Witnesses say she slipped and fell in. Rescuers found her about a mile downstream an hour later. He gave her CPR at the scene and took her to the hospital. The Fayette County Coroner says the teen died around 1:22 yesterday afternoon at UK Hospital. Her name has not been released. First, let me say that my heart and prayers go out to the family of this young lady. This happened about four months ago, and it is my hope that at no time does this episode tear out the wounds of grief that will take so long to heal. The Robinson Dam is upstream of the Fal Falmouth Dam, and you can drive from Falmouth to Robinson in about 16 minutes or 23 miles. While we were performing research on this week's episode, we found this next video. And it was at that time that we decided we needed to stop and talk about the hidden dangers associated with low head dams. The state of Indiana also deals with this problem and they involved the local media to get the word out. So I'm also going to share segments of that video also.
Joe, lowhead dams are not new to Indiana waterways, and neither are the dangers they present. Most were put in place around 100 years ago, and while they can look relatively tame, state officials are trying to send a strong message. Don't go near a lowhead dam. Ron Lewis is the general manager of Rusted Moon Outfitters, an outdoor sporting goods store in Broad Ripple. He's been active in water paddling sports for more than 40 years, so he knows what he's doing. Their seatback's height adjustable, and I don't care. I want to slam it to the bottom and break off the knob. But Lewis is frustrated, and that frustration comes from here. This is a low-head dam. They're man-made structures put in place across the state around a century ago, and for various reasons, like to power a mill. But some are still being used today to create water supply, and they can be deceiving. They look so simple, they look so innocent, um, but the physics are so strong. There are around 150 of these dams across Indiana, but Lewis's frustration isn't directed at the dams, it's the people coming into contact with them. He says people using the rivers need to be better prepared. The drop-offs on the dams can be rather small, some just about a foot or so, but when a kayaker, swimmer, or fisher gets caught in one, the result can be deadly. The water will push them down because we're buoyant. We will come off the bottom. We'll come right back up in that backwash and it's just a, almost like a washing machine bringing you back a circle. It will trap anything in that. That's the dangers of a low head dam. According to the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, at least 28 people have died in Indiana in the last 20 years due to a low head dam. Captain Bill Brown with the DNR says more than a third of deaths are people trying to rescue someone. Is if you see someone here and you don't understand the boil or the backwash and you go, oh my goodness, they're stuck, and you think I'm going to swim out there and get them, you become a victim yourself, caught up in something you can't escape. Brown says it's a throwing rescue only. This is a throw bag and you can get them at most sporting goods stores. You throw the bag over the victim's shoulder, grasp the rope, all while yelling, over your shoulder, lay on your back, kick, 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 kick. That's what you're doing. The message to keep your distance from low head dams is not new. Low head dams like this one on the White River have had safety mechanisms installed to prevent the intense churning of water. Some have even been broken up and removed, but that's costly. Marty Benson, the DNR's assistant director of communications, says another option would be to install more warning signs but that presents its own challenges. Like, what should they say? As far as signs, where do you put the sign? Once you get into the current of a low head dam, it's too late to turn around. So do you put it way upstream? Overall, officials agree that those interested in using Indiana's waterways need to be aware of low head dam dangers through research and education. Be careful, be smart, have a plan when you go into the water, and if the water is high and dangerous, don't go in it and stay away from a low head dam at any cost because it could be your last trip. And Lewis couldn't agree more. He says some of the fatal drownings could have been prevented, but he also has another important message for the public. Um, this isn't something we shouldn't do. This is just one other safety rule. Wear a life jacket, be sober battle with experience. Come to a place like Rusted Moon or your local paddling shop and take a lesson, ask some questions and learn a little something. You know? Over the 64 miles of the South Fork of the Licking River, we've been able to identify six still functional low head dams and the remnants of one old dam at the old Lewis Hunter Distillery site. All of these have historical significance and we still need to determine the history behind the dam and Falmouth. We will discuss this in upcoming episodes. For now, we want to close by reminding you of the danger zone associated with these dams and the hidden dangerous hydraulics that is warranted search and rescue to dub lowhead dams as drowning machines. I hope that you have found this episode informative and we look forward to seeing you soon as we work towards bringing you the next episode of FishingLocalWaters.com. Thank you.